but I can't defeat him myself. I know. Hi everyone, I'm Sakoda, and we're back with another fun LEGO Ninjago Dragons Rising set review. This time we're reviewing set number 71794, Lloyd and Aaron's Ninja Team Max. Also known as the Kitongu mech in the Bionicle community, because this set kind of resembles a Bionicle character called Kitongu. This set has 764 pieces, goes for $79.99 in dollars, $84.99 in euros, or $74.99 in pounds. Without further ado, let's get into the review. Here's a look at everything you get in this set. For our ninja, we're getting Lloyd and Eren. And for the Imperium characters, we're getting Rapton an Imperium Claw General, and an Imperium Guard Commander. This set includes two mechs, which are Aaron's mech and the big Lloyd mech. Let's start by taking a look at our minifigures. For our ninja, we have Lloyd and Aaron on the right. Both of these use this new shoulder piece, while Lloyd uses a more standard hood piece and Aaron has one with golden horns. This is a new dual molded piece and I think the one with horns looks really cool. Something I think was a bit hard to tell from the set pictures we got beforehand is that Lloyd's suit is bright green. Usually Lloyd's suit are a bit of a darker green, but this time they went with the bright green color. Lloyd's suit overall is very similar to the one the other ninjas have, and Eren's is a bit more of a custom made look. If you look at them on the side, you can see that Lloyd has dark green hands, while Eren has one orange arm. On the back, both of the ninja can carry two katanas on that new shoulder piece. Without all the gear, we get a better look at the beautiful printing. Lloyd has two face prints, this one is the more normal face, and I'm really happy that we're getting a different face print for all of the ninja with these new suits. Generally, I really like this Lloyd suit. It's a bit of a more simpler design with the dark green gradient that goes into the legs, but I think the simple design works well with the more complex shoulder piece they have. The suit has some little golden details, including an emblem having the Ninjargon letter L on it, probably for Lloyd. Eren's suit, on the other hand, looks a bit more custom made. It seems like he has a cool hoodie with a dragon design on it, and that's what he based his suit on. That dragon design ties nicely into the orange arm, so I think that's a really cool design idea. He also has the letter A in Ninjargon on his torso print. If we turn the minifigures to the back, you can see that Lloyd has this dragon symbol on his back. Around it there are some like angular flourishes. These are often used in dragon designs in Ninjago, so I think that's very fitting for Lloyd. You also get a better look at Lloyd's other face print, which is kind of this face mask design. It reminds me a lot of the Prime Empire suits. Lloyd's version of this mask design has some scales on it, where the other ninja would have elemental designs. Eren sadly doesn't come with a second face print, but you can get a better look at the back of his torso where that dragon design continues and it has Eren written in Ninjargon on it. Here's a quick look at the ninja without the shoulder armor but with the mask piece. I think this looks kind of goofy so I don't think a lot of people will display their minifigures like this. And here you can see Lloyd with a second face while wearing the full mask and shoulder armor combo. While this set doesn't come with hair pieces, I wanted to take the time to show you how Lloyd looks with his hair piece on while wearing that new shoulder piece. I think that actually looks really cool. He's very prominently featured in some of the trailers like this, so I wanted to show you that it is possible to have the hair piece on while wearing that shoulder armor. Next up, we have our Imperium characters. From left to right, we have Rapton, the Imperium Claw General, and the Imperium Guard Commander. All of these minifigures use the same new shoulder piece in black, as well as the same legs and torso. Rapton has his cool face print with this visor and some scars over where his eyes would be. He has white hair and he overall just looks very grumpy. The Imperium Claw General has his new headgear piece in black. This looks very insect or beetle-like. I like it a lot. It's very unique. The Imperium Guard Commander has this big hat. This is a new piece in black here and I think it looks really cool as well. When we turn the minifigures around, you can already kind of see the back printing on their torso and also on the back of that new shoulder piece there's a stud so you can add something to it. When we take away their armor and headgear pieces, you get a better look at all the printing. 
As I said earlier, they have all the completely same printing on torso and legs, but you can see those metallic golden details with this futuristic kind of armor look with those orange energy details. I overall like this print a lot. They all have unique headpieces too. For Raptin, I turned around his head so you can see his alternate face where he has these golden teeth on his lower jaw. He looks very angry and menacing here. For the Imperium Claw General, he has a very insect-like but robotic face. If you've seen the other reviews, this is the same headpiece as the Imperium Claw Hunter. The Imperium Guard Commander has this one big eye and also a very robotic looking face design. I like this design a lot, it's a very unique look with the big hat and the one big eye. If we turn all of them around, you can see how the print continues on the back. Just overall a very nice and detailed armor design for all of them. But you can also see that the Imperium Claw General and the Imperium Guard Commander have printing on the back of their head, which I think is really nice. Continues that robotic and sci-fi looking design. And I think it's the same printing on both of their heads, just on different colored head pieces. We also get some very nice minifigure gear pieces. First of all, we get two Imperium swords in the set, one for Raptin and one for the Claw General. This is a new dual molded piece with a trans orange blade and a gun middle hilt. I think it's a very cool new design, I like this piece a lot. The Imperium Guard Commander comes with a brick build weapon. This is an electro staff which is built with a lightsaber hilt and two of those new mech finger pieces. I think it's cool that he has like a staff melee weapon, makes a lot of sense for a guard character. Eren also comes with his signature tool, which is this new grappling hook piece. This is kind of a rubbery piece, if you ever had like one of the Lego whip pieces, it's kind of similar to that. And I think the idea is just that he can grapple onto things in this set with it. Next up, we're gonna take a look at Eren's mech. Eren's mech overall has a Keat Orange or Chima Yellow design. He comes with some dark green detailing and the overall build is very similar to the EVO SCCBS mechs. I think it has some cool different shaping with some very interesting parts usages. So first of all we want to put in Eren. So what we do is we open up that dragon head part in the front. We can see two studs in there and we just stand the Eren minifigure in there and close it up. The feet of the mech have a very simple design. They use a big slope piece basically to generate the foot and have a mixel ball joint in the ankle. The legs are a bit more detailed, for example they use astromech heads to give the illusion of a joint, even though it's the pre-bent SCCBS piece. The front of the legs is covered with the Marvel Super Heroes mech shell piece, I think this gives it a very interesting different look than the other mechs, I think that's a very creative idea. Can be flipped up and down, but I think it's just supposed to give him that leg design. Of course, there's also another ball joint at the top of the leg, so you have a good range of motion with this mech and it's very poseable. The arm build of the mech is very simple, it's very similar to the other EVO mechs. It uses that mech shell piece in Keat Orange here, there's a mixel joint in the shoulder and in the wrist, and you can give them blades as weapons by clipping them to the hand. The front of the mech features a dragon head design. This is made with one of those big dragon head pieces and this is a new unique print with a very mechanical looking dragon face on it. One side features a ninjargon A, the other side just has the same design without that A. On top of that dragon head design you have a 2x2 round tile with a print on it. This print we've seen a lot in the other evo mechs for example and just says ninja in ninjargon. If you look at the front of this mech from the side angle a bit, you sadly kinda have a lot of the Eren minifigure exposed. You can see, for example, big parts of his leg and even parts of his torso and arms. I find it kinda weird how it seems like the solution for this problem is already built into the set, because there are these two bar connections here that aren't really used, and I just added some of my own pieces here to basically just cover up that gap and it's super easy. Let me know what you think, do you prefer that over how it looks in the original set? At the top of the mech you have these black little flaps, you can move them up and down, I think they're just there to give an interesting shaping around the head. And when we turn the mech to the back, we have this big brown brick with a blue pin in it. This is gonna be used to connect the two mechs later on, but I do think it looks a bit ugly from the back of the mech. You can easily just remove those pieces and I think that looks a lot better, but you're gonna need them to connect the two mechs. Overall, I really like this little mech. It's your classic EVO mech build and it's very poseable. I do like a lot what they did here parts usage wise. It gives it a very interesting shape compared to the other EVO mechs that have a more standard build to them. It looks very personalized for Eren. 
Now it's time to look at Lloyd's mech. Lloyd's mech is quite the massive structure. The design reminds me a lot of the Oni Titan or the Golden Mech. It has this big head with one eye, which many people compare to Kitangu, a character from Bionicle. On his shoulders he has some little blades as decorations as well as these big Technic panels. The mech has huge hands and of course that super unique foot design with those Geta sandals. From the side you get a better look at those shoulder pieces and from the back you can see the back armor. We want to inspect all the details of this mech so we're gonna start at the head with this big hat and the one eye as well as the driver's seat. The hat itself is on a ball joint as well as a hinge in the back of the construction. That way you can move around the head a lot and you can get better access to the driver's seat. To put Lloyd into the driver's seat we'll flip up the head, move the shoulder panels out of the way a bit and you can already see the little seating area for Lloyd. If we want to put in Lloyd we just have to be sure to take out his katanas from his back and put him in that seat. After that we can close everything back up. Luckily in the back of this mech there's an area where we can store the katanas, there's two double clips so we could potentially also store Eren's katanas there. While we're here in the back we can also get a nice look how those shoulder panels are attached. The panels are connected to this kinda new piece which is a mixel ball joint on a longer bar. This holds the panels in place but allows for a lot of posability too. The panels are decorated with very big stickers so you gotta be very careful when applying those. They also have some additional points of movement because they are connected with Technic pins to each other. There's also this little stickered armor piece which is on a ball joint as well so you can move that individually from the panel. So overall there's just a lot you can do with these panels. While looking at the torso we get a good look on the designs on those panels. One side has a cool dragon decoration and the pattern. The other side has that same pattern as well as the ninjargon letter L and the word Ronin. There are also two little chains attached to the panels. Looking at the torso you can already see the pinhole which will later be very important for the connection function. We also can see the joint in the center of the torso. With this joint the torso can be moved back and forth as well as rotated which is super rare to get with mechs especially for this size. The posability of the shoulder panels allows for all kinds of fun configurations. You can kinda spread them out like wings or just move one to the back behind the head and have the other one there if you would like some asymmetry. But for now we're gonna take off the shoulder panels to get a better look at the actual structure of the mech. I think taking away the shoulder panels completely changes the look of this mech. It makes him look a lot more slim, a lot more agile than the big bulky mech it was before. Taking away the panels also allows us to get a better look at the arms. In the shoulder joint we have another one of these big mech joints. This allows us to rotate the arms as well as move them inwards and outwards. We also have elbow joints. These use the classic ratchet pieces can be moved up and down as well as rotated outwards and inwards. The mech also has two massive hands. The hands can be rotated. They're connected with a mixel ball joint but in a way where you can only rotate them and not move them in any other way. The hands feature a little sticker as well as five individually movable fingers with the thumb being connected at a bit of a different angle. The arms of the mech are of course completely symmetrical so the other arm has all the same posability. When those shoulder panels are connected it's a lot harder to pose the arm so I personally recommend moving them out of the way, posing the arm however you want it to be and then moving them back in place. The mech carries a very long pole arm like weapon. In the front it uses this blade piece that was introduced in the crystallized wave of sets. There are multiple connection points where it can be held on by the hands. And in the back it has this little red blade piece which can swing around freely. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a banner or a tassel or if it's supposed to be a blade weapon that swings around. The weapon can be taken out by just moving the fingers out of the way. It's just connected by one pin and you can attach it to the different pin holes for example to hold it in two hands. The legs are once again connected by a pair of those mech joints. It's attached in a similar way to Jay's Titan mech. That way they can be moved in and out slightly and they can also be rotated. The upper legs have green armor with some golden details. For some reason there's a red pin here. I don't really get why it's there. It doesn't really have any purpose and it doesn't look too nice. 
Maybe it's just for the instructions so people know which pinhole to use, but I think that could have been hidden nicely or just left out. Around the knee area we can already see those black loops. These are built with Technic connectors and will be more important later for the combination of the two mechs. There are also some big green dishes on the left and right of the knee which give it a nice look. And you can also kind of see the ball sockets that create the knee. Yes, this mech once again has bendable knees, which is of course awesome to see. It uses two of those golden ball socket pieces per knee and you can move them back and forth. Here from the back you get a nice look on how exactly it works. It's very similar to Jay's Titan mech or the crystallized Samurai X mech. The feet are of course one of the highlights of this mech. They have these cool Gato style sandals with two grey spikes in the front. The side is decorated with those brown ingot pieces and the two blocks on the bottom that are iconic for that style of shoe. I really love how it uses that little brown handlebar as the thong of those shoes, as well as the build for the feet themselves. They use a 1x2 slope and two 1x1 G slopes, so they use the seams between the pieces in a way that it looks like individual toes, which I think is so smart. The lower legs themselves have the green armor up top where the knee starts and then it goes into dark tan. It kind of looks like it could be cloth wrapping around the legs or something like that. I like how it adds a different color to it. Overall Lloyd's mech is extremely poseable. I want to show you some poses you can get it in with all that articulation. It is sometimes a bit hard to pose it with those panel pieces. As I said earlier it might be smart to move them out of the way before posing. And with the shoes sometimes it falls over a bit easily compared to other mechs that have like often rubber on their feet so they stand more firmly. But this set has a whole lot of articulation so you can get it in some quite dynamic and cool poses. Now it's time to show you all the combination function. So what we want to do first is we move those panels out of the way as well as maybe the hat so we can see better. We take the little Aaron mech, flip down the feet and put the feet into those loops on the knees. You can adjust them a bit more so they fit in nicely. And then we line up the blue pin on the back of the Aaron mech and put it into the pinhole on the Lloyd mech. Now the two mechs are connected. I usually like to line up the arms so they go together and then we can put the panels back over the arms so it looks all nice. Now the little mech is strapped into the big mech, kind of like a baby carriage. I think that's a really fun idea. It's a nice way to portray the character dynamic between Lloyd and Eren with their mechs. I'm gonna show you the combined mech here from some different angles. I think a lot of people might not like how far the dragon head sticks out. I personally think it looks okay. The way I like to look at it is that is the dragon head in the front and the panel pieces kind of portray the wings of a dragon. So it's kind of a dragon built into a mech. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I think it looks pretty cool. If you want to, you can also connect the little chains on the shoulder panels of the Lloyd mech to the Aaron mech. I think it looks kind of nice, but I don't really think it's that necessary. Once you're done with the combined version of the mech, you can easily take out the Aaron mech again. Just pull on his torso and take his legs out of those loops. A lot of times, sadly, the blue pin will be stuck in the Lloyd mech. So you might want to pull that out and put it back into the Aaron mech. For the mech collectors out there, I also wanted to give you a bit of a size comparison. Here's Lloyd and Aaron's Ninja Team mech compared to Zane's Titan mech and Jay's Titan mech. As well as compared to Lloyd's Titan mech and the crystallized Samurai X mech. This set of course also comes with a bunch of spare pieces, nothing too crazy here. There is one instruction booklet, once again in the style with the little progress bar. This time it's Aaron giving you the progress. This set has one sticker sheet and it's quite a big one even though it's not a lot of stickers but those panel stickers are just very big. So be very careful when applying those if you ruin those that heavily impacts the look of this set as they are so big. Okay, I think we talked about everything. I just want to go ahead and give you my final thoughts about this set. This set very much fits into this line of sets that we've gotten over the recent years with like the bigger Ninjago mechs. Very much the Titan mechs or the big Samurai X mech from Crystallized. And I think it manages to once again find a unique spot in that lineup. This mech looks very different. It has a very different feel to it, especially with like the big hat, those shoulder pauldrons, the shoes. It looks very ancient, very mysterious compared to the other mechs, which all look very sci-fi and high-tech. 
And I think some people will really like that style, some people might not. I personally fall into to the camp of really liking that style. I think the, especially the one eye and hat look are really cool. I really like that a lot. And I think the same kind of applies to Eren's Mac too. He doesn't really follow the Evo format too strictly. He has a lot of unique part usages, which creates some shapes I think might, some people might find a bit exaggerated or impractical. For example, how far it sticks out here, I've seen a lot of people dislike. But I personally, I'm in the camp of, I'm, I'm glad they take some risks, I'm glad they mix up the build format, I'm glad they use some different building techniques. So I, I'm a fan of all the risks this set takes. There are some small problems I find, for example, like the gap with Aaron. I feel like that could have been easily fixed by adding a piece there or like some very minor stuff like that red pin. But I'm just kind of wondering why, why it is like that, but it's not really a big deal in my opinion. Some things I noticed during the building experience is a very straightforward build. It's very similar to, for example, some of the other Titan mechs. Um, it has that additional joint in the waist, which is very cool. Um, what wasn't that fun is the big stickers on these panels. I really wish that could have been printed. I was very worried I'm gonna mess those up. Luckily, I think I did fine, um, and I think it was manageable. But I feel like something that, that big and that important to the look of the set, that's really something I wish would be printed and not a sticker. I will say this is probably the mech with the most articulation we ever had, because it has that waist joint. No of the other Titan mechs ever had that. And I think that's really cool. Um, you you kind of lose the articulation when the Eren mech is in there. But I think the Lloyd mech on its own is already really cool. When we had the first pictures, I kind of thought I would like them more together. But now that I have the set in person, I'm definitely more of a fan of having them split apart. I think the Lloyd mech looks really cool without the Eren mech. And I think the Aaron mech is also a really cool small scale mech. One thing I will say, which I sadly noticed while doing this review, is you can pose the set very well. Uh, you can also very well find poses where it stands well, but I had this set fall over so many times during the process of the review. I think it's a bit of the combination of having so much articulation, while also having these shoes that aren't as stable as a lot of the other Titan mechs who have like rubber in their feet so they don't slip around that easily and also having the panels which restrict movement sometimes a little bit for the arms and I think if you, you take your time you have both of your hands free and you pose the mech you can get some really cool action poses I, I tried it you can do really cool action poses that you might not expect necessarily for it to stand and it will stand but during my review process when I have to like live move it for example and sometimes only have one hand it fell over a lot of times I think it it falls over more easily than some of the other Titan mechs, for example, so I wanted to point that out here. But overall, if you take your time and you pose it, you can get some really cool poses where it will stand. Um, the price for this set is $79.99 in dollars. It's 764 pieces, which I think it's fair. Um, it's the same price as the Jace Titan mech. It has a similar size. It has less pieces, but this one has some very big pieces, has extra joints. So I kind of I kind of get why. Uh, what I don't like is the Euro price is eighty four ninety nine, um, while the the Euro price for Jace Titan Mega is also seventy nine ninety nine. So I don't know why the Euro price is higher here. I mean there there are probably thousands of reasons for that. That might be like different currency exchange stuff and whatever taxes. So I don't really know why, but I feel like eighty four ninety nine euros because I'm in a country that pays with euros might be a bit more than than I would want for this set, but I also know, like, here in Germany, at least, you will usually get a discount, so you probably will be able to get it for 79.99 euros too. So I think this is a good mech. I think the price is generally fair. I think there's a lot here that might be a bit divisive, um, that some people will enjoy, some people will not enjoy. I fall in the camp of enjoying most of those decisions, like I like the shoulder pauldrons even though they maybe restrict movement a bit, I just like them style wise. I like the big hat, I like the shaping even like from the sides. So I, I'm personally a big fan of how this looks, I know some people aren't, but I personally like it. I personally think it's a great set, I would recommend this set. So thank you all so much for watching this review. Big thank you to the LEGO Ambassador Network for sending us these sets. And I hope you tune in for the next Ninjago review here on Keep the Peace. See ya!